Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan. Today we'll have a look at this paper, Lithium Treatment Extends Human Lifespan, Findings from the UK Biobank. I was not aware of lithium as a longevity supplement until we spoke with a couple of our recent guests, Dr. Chris Verberg and Dr. Thomas Gutozo. So I was very interested to see this recent paper come out. Let's have a look at it in some more detail. Lithium is the lightest of the metals and a nutritional trace element, which is also used pharmacologically, specifically for the management of bipolar disorder. However, recent studies have shown that it can also extend lifespan and healthspan in different animal models. Observational studies have shown a positive correlation between the amount of lithium in drinking water and human longevity. So in this study, they looked at data in the UK biobank of some 500,000 individuals, where they found that patients who were prescribed lithium had lower mortality with a p-value much less than the 0.05 cutoff. Further analysis of the data showed that lithium was the strongest factor in regards to this increased survival, where the lithium users were 3.6 times less likely to die at any given age compared to patients on non-lithium antipsychotic drugs. They say that although this does point to lithium being good for longevity, we need to be aware that the cohort is frequently under close medical supervision. What is the UK Biobank? It is a large scale medical database with genetic and health information on half a million participants from the UK, which is available to qualified researchers. These are the Kaplan-Meier survival curves for the two groups. Along the bottom is the age, and on the y-axis is the probability of a person being alive at that age. There were 276 patients who used exclusively lithium. The lithium was the prescription form, which is lithium carbonate. The paper does not discuss dose, though according to Dr. Cotoso, a typical dose for a bipolar disorder is around 300 milligrams per day. These lithium users were matched one to two with patients who were taking other antipsychotic drugs, but not lithium. The aim was to match for as many comorbidities, length of drug use and diagnosis as possible to remove potential confounding factors. And with a significant value, we can see that the lithium users shown here with the black line had a much better chance of survival. The hazard ratio was 27%. That is to say, for any age, the lithium users had only a 27% as much chance of dying, which is equivalent to 3.6 times less likely. None of the lithium users died by suicide. And since lithium is a mood enhancer, those in the other group who died of suicide were excluded. Analyzing the various factors which might impact longevity, only lithium was shown to have a significant positive effect. They did note that lithium's effect seemed to work on both sexes pretty much equally. In the summary, they do note some limitations of the study, but conclude that lithium seems to be the most significant factor in reducing mortality in the patients. This is in line with previous observational studies that have showed that areas with higher lithium in the drinking water had higher longevity as well as cognitive improvement. Here is an example of this kind of observational study. In the study, they looked at Oita Prefecture in Japan with a population of around 1.2 million, comparing longevity in each of the 80 municipalities with the lithium in the drinking water. They found an inverse correlation with a concentration of lithium in the water with all-cause mortality. Lithium has been linked with molecular changes associated with longevity. I find it interesting that they point out improved kidney function, as I have heard that kidney damage is one of the possible side effects of long-term high-dose lithium use. As mentioned, clinical lithium use for bipolar disorder is normally around 300 milligrams whereas a supplement lithium is generally available in one to five milligram range. The authors said they could not evaluate the specific illnesses and identify the mechanisms by which lithium was working because of the small cohort size and suggest that this is a good area for study. An observational study, so showing a correlation, but it does seem strong and even seems to have an impact with very low doses that are available from drinking water if you are interested in learning more about lithium, please listen to our interview with Dr. Gotozo, who talks about it in more detail. 
Thank you for your attention, and I will speak to you again soon.